Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Fleetwood Bounder, which is a recreational vehicle, or an RV. And here's your first look at the RV, which is actually an RV from a TV series, where one of the plot points is having an RV just like this one, where drugs are made inside of it. Now, if you've seen the TV show, you know exactly which one I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, I won't say the name as to uh, hopefully not spoil it if you ever do watch it, although it's not that big of a spoiler or anything but just in case because there were bullet holes in the rv and you might be wondering well why are there bullet holes in the rv because that's what it was like in the tv series and you might be wondering why is the interior stripped out because that is also what it was like in the tv series although the one in the tv series did have a little bit more to the interior than this one but it was a stripped down interior and we'll do one more pan of the outside we can go ahead and throw up the j-beam structure so you can see that now even though on the outside it looks like it's a real simple vehicle where it's just basically a box there's a lot more to it than just that. You can see it's a really complex looking J-beam structure even though it has such a simple looking exterior. Which is kind of surprising. And then we could go ahead and take a look at the inside. The interior is a lot more of a work in progress than the exterior. The only thing in here you can interact with is the steering wheel which works just like any other steering wheel in any other vehicle. But the gauges and the pedals are non-existent at the moment. One interesting thing though is that you could actually see the engine through this little cover right here in between the two chairs and I thought it was pretty cool being able to see the engine right there. And then you could also see how dirty this RV is. If you look straight ahead you see where the wiper wiped and you see where it didn't wipe and it's astounding how filthy this thing actually is. And well that's about all there is to say about the interior of this thing I think so let's go ahead and head back to the outside. So now we can go ahead and get this thing into a crash and I think we'll start off by crashing into the wall that is directly behind us. So we'll just do a quick 180 and accelerate as fast as this thing can accelerate which isn't that fast. We'll probably only reach the wall at about 60 miles per hour or so because it's so big and heavy and has such a weak engine. It should be enough for an interesting crash I would think. And I take that a smith back. How about we drop it down to 55 miles per hour because it's not going to reach 60. You can go ahead and put a little bit of slow-mo on and then increase it right before impact because I want to do this at 100 times slow-mo for the first crash so you can see this thing in as much detail as I possibly can show. And then maybe later crashes we can do it a little bit faster. So here is the impact and a couple things to look out for is there's a little gap that opens up right here on the roof which is kind of interesting. And then all these flaps on the side all open up when you get into impact which is always fun to watch and you have some flaps on the other side as well. And you have some flaps in the front even, and the door will sometimes flap open as well. Although this time, it looks like he's staying uh, pretty intact. I'm surprised. The 55 mile per hour crash is usually enough to open up that door, but I guess it wasn't this time. So you can see on this side, the flaps are still bouncing around. It's just fun to watch those. You get the flaps on the front. Now, I really don't know how a Fleetwood Bounder would look after a crash. I can look at it and tell you if it looks glitchy, but I can't tell you how realistic it looks. And the only glitchiness I really noticed is that there is some clipping between the side and the front. So you see how uh, this section right here goes into and then out of the front. That's what the clipping is. It's pretty much a minor issue. And then, of course, the seats explode. But that happens in every vehicle. So it's something that's not exactly worth mentioning almost because it's so common. Uh, the rest of the interior, though, seems like it held up pretty good. And there's no damage to the whole backside, which is exactly what you would expect, but I wasn't sure if it would actually hold up as you would expect because it is such a long vehicle. And now we could do something completely different. We could do a suspension test with the RV, and I truly have no idea how well this will work out, so it should be pretty interesting. Let me line my camera up properly, and we'll do it at half speed so you get a good visual of what's going on without it being too slow. So going over the harder part of that, that test, it seemed to do pretty well. Let's go ahead and make our way to the easier section and keep driving on that. And there was a lot of noises going on. You'll hear like bang, 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 but it made it through. That's the amazing part. And as far as I can tell, it still drives straight. It doesn't look like it's quite sitting straight though, does it? Looks like it might be leaning a little bit to the left, doesn't it? But it's still driving. Now I should probably point out though that the rear wheels can always deliver power no matter the situation. So you can have the whole vehicle crushed to a cube and it can still put down power to the floor because there is no way to break that connection as far as I can tell. And now the suspension test dominated by this bounder. That is actually impressive that it can do that. Now this one, I, I don't know if it can do it unless I actually properly approach it. Like if I go really fast through it, will end up just flying and I don't think it can survive that. You have to kind of go, you have to maintain speed otherwise you get stuck but you don't want to go too slow. It's a real 
kind of very particular test here and I think I went a little too slow so we're just gonna bounce off of it until we get to the end but the uh, the RV does have enough ground clearance to make it over that test even you know I don't usually think massive ground clearance when I think of RVs but this one has a pretty good amount of ground clearance for it well, I got to do things like that and that just all kinds of things and it's just so loud as it does it and the panels flap all over the place it is actually really fun to watch that. So it just still drives. Let's go ahead and now crash it. And I, I know a, a special place we could crash this. It'll probably be pretty cool. I think we're going to try to basically tear the whole roof off of this by crashing into this over here. Just something like this. So it just hits basically just the roof. Eight times slow mode there. All right, there we go. The camera angle is kind of awful. I'm apologizing for that right now. But you can see. I basically, instead of just tearing off the roof, I separated the RV from the frame. Whoopsie! That's not good. Can I drive this? Oh, you're still stuck. Go! 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 I want to drive the frame. I want to drive the frame. Come on. No! Yes! <laughs> I am a frame. Also, my engine is falling off. That's uh, not going to be very helpful. I don't know why it's so slow. There we go. Oh, the engine is just... <laughs> what in the world? Okay, yeah, this is a... This is a beta. Like, things like this probably are... Those weird details that are worked out in later versions. But this is interesting. Just the, the fact that you can actually separate the frame from the RV, yet it still moves. It's kind of cool. But it's totally uh, illogical. So I'm just going to say, you know what? That's one of those things that will probably be fixed in a later version. For the next test, let's try to keep the body on the frame because after you've seen that once, there's really no need to see that again. So I think something like the cannonball would be pretty interesting because I don't think it has enough force to totally strip the body off the frame, but it does have enough force to do some pretty interesting things, I would assume. So I'm just going to try to line this up as best as I can to be directly behind the RV. And this thing handles so badly, I'm probably better off to do it like that where I just tell it, I respawn it when it uh, looks like it's centered up. And that looks like a pretty good position. So I'll raise that a little bit to about there, put the parking brakes on, put some slow-mo there so I can actually see what happens nice and clearly, get a better camera angle like so, and fire. Oh, it's lifting it up. Wow. Oh my goodness. How did the cannonball lift it? Oh my, really? It's going to lift it all the way up to the, is it going to just do a full flip? All right, full speed this thing. What's going on here? Oh, it's okay. It, it landed on its feet. That was interesting looking. That was really interesting looking. The way it just went straight up like that. I guess I put the cannon a little too tilted upwards, although that was pretty cool. Maybe it was just the right amount of upwards tilt. Right, so what if we tried it again? Can we try it again? I think we could. Why not? We won't bother with slow-mo this time. Shoot! Oh! Wow! Okay. The everything just fell off. <laughs> it just stripped the back off, the side, and the front all with one cannon. I don't know how one side managed to stay on while the other flew off, but that was impressive. We just have a small pile of pieces. And where did the cannonball even go? Well, it's somewhere in the pieces. Oh, yeah, there it is. I didn't notice it at first. But that, that was something, man. And I'm pretty sure this thing could still drive if you wanted to. Oh, parking brakes on. Yeah, can still drive. Heck, we might as well take the last side panel off. I mean, what is it? What is its purpose? To protect me from the wind? You're not doing anything. You're gonna get shot off. Oh, I can't believe I cleared it. I thought I was gonna hit it for sure. All right, reset the cannon. Get a better camera angle. We're gonna lower the cannon, make sure it hits it like right in the center, and boom. Well, that wasn't quite the plan can we drive probably since you can't break it you probably can but I think at this point this thing has been thoroughly ruined so we can go ahead and reset it and reset the cannon and now we could try to shoot it from the side since we shot it from the back figure we can also shoot it from the side because that'll probably be interesting as well now we just gotta get to the side drift I just traded drift a cannon didn't work out. Uh, cans aren't made for drifting. And just give me a second to align it. There we go. 
Got to shoot it right in about the middle-ish. So that should be pretty close. Parking brake is on. Parking brake is on. Yep. And get a better camera angle than this one. There we go. And fire. That was beautiful. Oh, the way the panels are flying off too. That is so cool. Alright, so it's rolling over now. I think that absorbed pretty much all the cannonballs impact because it looks like it's pretty much stopped. Well, that was uh, unexpectedly fast. It was just one hit and it was done for on the side impact one because it flipped it over. I could probably try to flip it back over if I was crazy enough to, but I don't really think I want to try to flip it back over after I just flipped it over. That seems a little uh, tiresome. So instead, we'll move on to doing something else. What if we tried the RV on the rollover sled? Now, in order to get the rollover sled to sit on the ground properly, I have to make this a car, not the cannon, and then we go to the sled, and then it'll be at the proper height to actually function. At least it looks like it is. Let me double check this thing real quick. Do you function? Yeah, it's fine. Now it's just a pushing sled. That's the best acceleration that RV will ever experience. That was actually pretty cool that it did that. But it was not the goal. Uh-oh, we're stuck in the sled. Let's move the RV out of the way. And uh, it's going to get stuck on the sled again. Nope, we're good. All right, got to do a strange maneuver here. We're going to get this thing on there eventually. Got to just maneuver, maneuver, maneuver until it's in position. And then we'll see what happens when you roll it. Because I think this will be a pretty interesting thing to watch roll. Just slowly and... Uh, I guess about there is probably the best positioning because you can't quite center it since the wheelbase is so offset. So we'll uh, become the sled and uh, put 8 times slow on this for now and go. Now I'm going to do the camera manually here so I'll watch it make sure it doesn't tip over or something. Alright, it is sliding off isn't it? Well, I guess it's holding on. Come on! Oh, it's getting- that's perfect. It's gonna hit those and then it's gonna roll it. There we go. Otherwise it would just slid the whole way, I'm pretty sure. And that was honestly kind of underwhelming, if that's all it's gonna do. Like, it looks like it doesn't have much speed left, does it? That was it! <laughs> that was uh, a little underwhelming. I thought it'd be more interesting than that, but I guess uh, the sled can only do so much, huh? What else can we try to mess with in the with the uh, RV, huh? How about if we tried going through a brick wall with the RV? That's what most people use their RVs for, according to my market research. The number one use of RVs is going through brick walls or camping. I can't quite decipher the data. All right, just 20 miles per hour through the brick wall. Yeah. You can't stop the R. You can stop the RV. We need more speed. We're gonna try to bring this thing up to maybe about 40 miles per hour since the first one was 20. So since we're going in reverse, we should be able to hit 20. I mean 40 by the time we get to those bricks now. And we can use maximum realism mode by going from the inside, just because we kind of already did it from the outside. So let's see. Right to the bricks. Come on. Oh goodness, that stops you hard. I don't think we are strong enough to go through the bricks. It's not going to happen with the RV unless we had even more speed, but I don't feel like backing it up. So we're going to move on to a different test, like the large spinner versus the RV. This one should be pretty good, and we got to remove the wall, because I don't think it'll even fit in the wall, walled area with the spinner. It'll kind of just sit on top of it then. So with the spinner, we put it in the manual, put it to uh, third gear. And if we're impatient, we can speed it up manually. And now we can just take the RV straight at it and see how it fares and if it uh, fares too well we can make it go even faster if we need to but I think the speed it's going at should be enough so we'll go eight times slow-mo looks like we're gonna hit it right here so let's go a hundred times slow-mo so you can really see the impact Freeze physics for a second try to switch the camera up to this one I think this one will be a little bit better at seeing what's going on Man, these are loud crashes that this thing gets. Like, the crashes are just so loud. Whoops. 
hit the wrong button there. All right, we're going to speed it up then. So it actually fared surprisingly well. You see how much impact was imparted on it by how it rebounded, yet it doesn't look that terribly damaged. Yes, it is very, very damaged, but not as bad as I was expecting, to be honest. It actually did pretty well. So let's raise the speed up to super speeds. Now this one, it's not going to stand a chance. This one will get obliterated. So eight times slow mo, and you can see, even in eight times slow mo, that thing is moving. First hit shreds the front. Second hit comes in for the rest. The double hit—that's what kills it. And if it actually swings the body into the rest, it's just gonna. Oh, this is this is what I wanted to see. Where it just gets total destruction. And I don't even know where to put my camera because there's so much destruction. Too much destruction for one RV to handle. Whoops, I hit K instead of J. Well, that's unfortunate. We could try it one more time and do it in real time just because I like chaos. You're not going to be able to tell what's going to happen here. But you pretty much could tell on the last one already, so you don't need to tell. That time it worked. <laughs> I now have a 2D RV. Can it drive? Can it drive? Can it drive? No. What was that? Some piece of the thing was like right next to me and I couldn't tell what it was. Maybe I saw the spinner and it was just kind of deceived me. I don't know. And I think that concludes the usage of the spinner. So let's go ahead and replace it with the inflatable mat just to see how this thing does with an inflatable mat. It's one of those things where, you know what, I want to try the RV with everything I possibly can. And the inflatable mat was next on the list basically. And let's see what's going to happen here. Eh, not much. The mat does its job, keeps it all gentle landing like, and then it just slowly rolls off. But I have an idea after watching that actually. What would happen if we were to try to um, basically hit this thing on its roof really hard? Would the whole thing basically explode or implode or something? Or would it be able to actually hold up? I'm not really sure. And I'm also not really sure where the best place to test this would be, unfortunately. I'm thinking what we could do is we could put it in the tube over there to our right. And once we're in the tube, we can just put sun gra I mean, not sun gravity, reverse gravity on. And it should be able to just smash it up on the top, as some, assuming there's nothing in the way. And I think if we stop right here, it should be clear path to the top. Yep. So we just go ahead and open up the environment. And then we use negative earth. There we go. That just looks funny. And earth again. And then it gets super flattened. Almost looks like a train for some reason to me at some times, like when it's half crashed. I don't know why. I just, I'll look at it and I'll think train. Oh, it's totally immobilized here. Or at least very immobilized. I wonder if I could actually get it to move if it wasn't in the tube. <laughs> Nope, it is gone. Oh, the rear wheels aren't making contact to the ground. That's why. You're not going to get much accomplished like that. All right, what about, since we were looking at the uh, different gravities, what about sun gravity? Oh, it actually holds up. Holds up. What if we had it happen twice, though? And a third time. I'm just going to keep doing it until it breaks. Man, it's looking cool, though. It looks more aerodynamic now. It also looks kind of ugly when you do that. But it's more aerodynamic too. Just over and over. Yeah. Well, I could just do this, huh? Yeah. I'm making a sandwich. There we go. Flattened it up. Yeah. <laughs> that thing flattens real well. There's no spikes or anything. Good job, RV. Now, there's no hope in this thing driving, right? <laughs> yeah, just as expected. It's not going nowhere. One thing I haven't shown you for this vehicle yet is the parts menu. Now, there's nothing you can choose as an alternative part, but you can remove things if you wanted to from the suspension. You can remove the engine or the transmission. And then on the floor, that's where things get interesting because you can remove some really interesting parts when you get into this menu. For example, I could remove the whole left side of the RV. 
I'm not exactly sure why you would ever want to do that, but you totally can if you want to. You can also remove the whole right side and you can remove just the little doors on the side or the main door. But I don't know why you'd ever want to do that because I love watching those things bounce around. I'd rather move the whole side instead of removing just the doors. So we have something that looks like that. And then he'd be like, I don't like it still. Remove the back. And then the top just kind of sags. If you want it to really sag, you just remove the whole front end and then it just falls to the ground. And then you can remove the whole frame and then you have, I mean, the whole floor and you have just the frame again, which you've already seen because I tore it off earlier. And we could also um, remove the front lights and the front little flaps right there. Speaking of the lights, they are non-functional. We could turn the headlights on, turn the blinkers on. They don't do anything front or back. Same with brakes, but um, that's something that could probably be added in a later version uh, if it comes out. And I think that covers all the parts for this thing. So let's do a couple more crashes around here and then we'll uh, move on to some other places to do crashes as well. We'll start off with just kind of clipping the top and hitting the front. And a minor collision, minor collision. Lots of minor collisions because to me those are the most fun. Uh oh, it is pulling hard to the right. Let's try to fix that by crashing into something else. That totally worked. Maybe I should crash things into it. It might be a little bit easier. I don't know. I guess it's okay. We can keep going. Crash there. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Wait, yes, it is. No, it's not. Freedom is not going to happen. So that's what it looks like dead a little bit of a mangled mess but there's no parts of the uh, vehicle that actually really look glitchy aside from the chairs the chairs they just make things really look bad when it's just a single glitch unfortunately for the next one let's go ahead and hit the RV with another vehicle so we'll use the T-Series with the cement mixer so we have as much weight as we possibly can when we ram into it and I don't know if the T-Series will spawn properly there, if it'll be stuck in the ground. It is. It's good to go. All right. Put this thing to automatic because I can't shift this. It's too many gears. It's because I'm lazy, that's all. So we got to go around. Parking brake on and then bump it. And it just kind of got pushed out the way. It didn't even do that much damage. Oh, no, I fell over. All right, I got a better idea. We're going to go over the ramp and then land on it and crush it. That seems like a much better idea. Crashing into it, kind of disappointing. Crushing it, hopefully less so. That looks pretty centered up, so let's grab the cement mixer and away we go. I don't know how fast to really approach this, though. I think full speed I might just fly over it, so maybe we'll try at about 20 miles per hour. I think that's a, a reasonable rate of speed something like this how weird it has some damage already well get some more that is actually working perfectly it just went right on top of it and is doing some great damage to it that was perfect couldn't ask for a better outcome than that one and it can no longer drive. But I'm looking at this and I'm curious. If I wanted to, could I park an RV on top of my other RV? Like, just, just because I can. I gotta find out. So I'm gonna do this like so. I'm gonna just go over here and use my teleportation abilities to park an RV on top of another one. And the answer to that is... Yes, I can. Let's put the parking brakes on and go. Okay, we can drive. My double-decker RV is a success. I just don't have any way to go under overpasses or anything like that, which is basically what this is right here in a way. Can we squeeze through? Yes, we can. And this thing feels like it's going to fall off at any moment, to be honest. But you know what? We're just going to take full advantage of what we got and go for it. Full speed ahead, which means we're going to reach highway speeds after... Uh... Let me check my sundial real quick. A fortnight. I don't know how I use a sundial to come to the conclusion of a fortnight, but you know what? This is gonna take forever. It might not even happen. With my patience, it's not gonna. That's for sure. So instead, let's uh, dump it off. Ha! 
the double RV crash. Alright, so I think that's enough of crashing the RV around here, and I've just made an, a glitchy abomination, which I don't even want to touch, with a 10-foot pole, so let's go ahead and change the map up. And let's pop over to the highway map, because I think it'll be fun to go there. All we're going to do is just drive it down the main road and see how it holds up, so let's just uh, grab it in the only color option we have, because you can try to change the colors, but it does nothing which I forgot to mention earlier, but now you know. And it looks like we are stuck on the ground, so we gotta fix that real quick. And we blew out part of the uh, vehicle's uh, doors already, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna destroy them all at the bottom of this cliff once we get there in about... Where's my sundial again? All right, it looks like sunset. Yeah, with this thing, it's gonna be even slower than the vehicles I used here before because I at least used the uh, truck which was faster this is a lot slower than the truck I don't even know if it'll reach 100 miles per hour here but we'll get to the bottom someday my dirty probably smelly RV see what years ago this is a family's prized RV now it's gonna wrap around a tree at 100 miles per hour Oh, it's gonna wrap into a tree. It's not even wrapping around it. There's some wrapping. Yeah, like a wrapper. All right, that's. Looking. Oh, there we go. There it goes. I was just kind of like it's going through the tree. There is the destruction I was looking for. I love it when the skid marks just hold tight to the tree like that. It just looks so cool when it does that. Speed up a bit. And that is the end of that RV. So we're done here. Let's go ahead and switch up to a different map. And you probably already know what's coming. It's leap of death time. All right, here we are. Let's get down to business. Not much to say here, just uh, going for it if I can. I hear all kinds of banging and stuff. I'm like, am I gonna make it? We're fine, we got this. Perfect. So you know why they call it a bounder? Because it bounds down cliffs. That was a terrible joke. That wasn't even a joke. That was more of a bad pun. It was an anti-joke. That's what it was. Anti-pun. I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyways, first crash, 100 times slow-mo. So you can see disintegration, probably. Oh, the chairs do not like this one bit. Camera freaked out just a tiny bit there because I didn't have the best of angles. But you get to see the outcome really well and it, it flattened it well. It did a good job of flattening it, got parts flying everywhere. You know, those little things that hold, those little storage bins that hold things, those little flaps that fall off. Those really make every crash with this thing look so much more dramatic and pretty. Like without that, it wouldn't look nearly as cool. And I guess that's uh, where that one ends. So the next one will be real time and then we'll be done here. But I, I absolutely love those things. Check this out, we're gonna do a backflip. Just kidding. Yeah, you don't even get to see what happens. Just we flat now, and that's the un unfortunate side effect of doing things in real time. But some people like real time for some reason. They don't quite get you guys, but uh, whatever. I'll do it for you. Now we can go ahead and finish things up in brutal slope. Same deal as every other time we've been here. We back the truck, it we get the fleet, we spawn it. Wait for it. No, that was too far, wasn't it? Eh. Uh, not by that much, it was pretty close. And then we go and hit it to the wall and the convertibilizer. That's the only way I know how to tell them apart. Like, I call one the convertibilizer. And it's also worth mentioning that this thing we could clutch in, or we could accelerate the whole way. The speed we get to at the bottom is the same, but I'm using a controller that doesn't have clutch bound to a key or a button. 
So it's a lot easier just to hold the throttle down to the floor instead of trying to uh, clutch in with one hand on the keyboard while my other hand's on the controller trying to steer. So we're swerving all over the place, but it looks like we can keep this thing stable enough to uh, get this thing head on. Good, 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 and super slow-mo. Because when you're at anything over 120 or 130 miles per hour, you want the 100 times slow-mo. Oh, that's it? It only smashed half of it. That's actually uh, pretty good. All things considered, only half of it getting smashed is pretty impressive. Oh, that's not so impressive, though. I swear, whenever I say, oh, that's great, and it crashed amazing, it glitches out. It almost always does that to me. It's like it's on purpose. It hears me. The game hears me saying, hey, that was good. And it's like, no, it wasn't. You don't tell me what's good. Blah, glitch your nails. What you doing, game? I, I don't know. It just feels like that. Anyhow, to the convertibilizer. And by the way, you could tell this thing was really not made for these kinds of speeds. Like when you try to steer anywhere, it just kind of slides all over the place. It's almost like you're driving on ice. It is very, uh, very, very bad to try to drive this thing on these conditions. At these speeds, I mean. So we get 100 times on the slow mo. And I don't know when exactly the impact will be. There it is. Lit up on the throttle. Oh, is it gonna strip it? Oh my goodness, I've never had a crash this loud before though. It's just non-stop crashing sounds. Oh my goodness. I have a cape. I am a superhero! I am a superhero named RV Man! I am a recreational vehicle man! I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that at all. Anyways, uh, until next time, uh, this is my VR, the Recreational Vehicle Man. I'll see ya!